What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Cartridge Talk. Jim to my right, Mr. Ryan Muckenhern across from me. Now, Jim, we get a lot of we get a lot of cartridge requests here for Ryan to talk about. And some, I mean, sometimes people are just like they're hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering over and over again, just hammering about the 300 hammer. So, Mr. <laughs> Gene, it's quits if I said that correctly. This is your lucky day because we are going to talk about the 300 hammer, a cartridge that I know I personally wasn't even aware of until we saw you. Well, I guess your first note and then all the other notes following. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what the heck is going on with this thing? Uh, so, Wilson Combat. Yeah. Wilson Arms. Reputable. Uh, yeah. Manufacturer of, slash customizer. Of yes. Firearms? Of... Very nice guns. Uh, a lot of pistols, now ARs. Um, cool stuff. Wanted a solution that was better than the 300 AAC for supersonic use, for like hunting, right? So if we look, we got to go back. We're going to go back two cartridges. We're going to go back three. Mm. We're going to go back to 300 Whisper, which then turned into the 300 AAC. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I shouldn't say that. Ooh. The 300 Whisper gave birth to the 300 AAC which I think was a really cool and still is a really cool cartridge, but lacked a few things, mm-hmm. um, namely velocity, which then spawned the 762 by 40 Wilson Tactical, which then spawned 300 Hammer. I didn't know about this Wilson Tactical in the middle of the, of the whole thing. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Mark. The 300 Blackout, yes, comparatively lacking velocity, yeah. but did it need velocity for the job that it was supposed to do? Well, I guess it depends. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if the question, excuse me, if the job description was suppressed, then no, uh, because it, then we're looking at like a 208 grain to 240 grain, 30 caliber projectile at 1,050 feet per second, which it does marvelously mm-hmm. and fits in the magazine without any goofing around. I and mean, essentially well. to be like yeah. a kind of almost like a super hopped up big pill pistol round in a way. Yeah, kind of. Yep. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Um, you don't have to do a bunch of monkeying around with it to get to shoot out of an AR platform. Right. Like I have a nine millimeter AR. A lot of goofing. A lot of goofing to get it to shoot, and yep. it doesn't shoot. Well, I, I just don't know if it will shoot as well as the three hundred blackout that I have does. Right. Okay. Anyway, sorry. We're on the three hundred hammer here. Though. Yeah. Um, so, but I, we're on the right track though, because all the research you can see my printout here, printouts here everything makes this comparison. Like, this is the immediate comparison that comes up. When you start talking about the 300 fair. hammer, it's like immediately the 300 blackout comes into the conversation. Yeah. It right. does. So the 300 blackout, um, you could shoot with, say, 150 grain projectile at supersonic velocities, but it's pretty anemic, like 1950 to 2,000 feet per second. If you're real spicy with your loading and you've got your twist rates right and your barrel lengths right, you can go hotter than that, um, certainly. But, it, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really ideal. Like, it wasn't the plug-and-play solution. So enter the 762 by 40 Wilson Tactical, um, which is a lengthened version of the 300 AAC. So w- we've talked in the cartridge talks before about what do, w- like, what do the numbers mean in the cartridge? So 7.62, 30 caliber, by 40, case length in millimeters. Um, Just one millimeter longer than that, 7.62 by 39. Correct. But so much different. Oh. So much different. Um, the 762 by 40 would be five millimeters long, longer than the 300 AAC, which is 7.62 by 35. Okay. okay. If we're if we're getting metric, right? Um, so we add more case, and then we change the bullet re- or like the the bullet intent, uh, or bullet intended to be used is what I was trying to say. So now we don't have a precedence on these very long, heavy for caliber. 30 caliber projectiles. We're now going with a shorter projectile, like a 125 Sierra or 110 Barnes. And we've got all this case that we can stuff with powder. Now we're getting some pretty bonkers velocity out of this. We're, we're like really scraping 30, 30 and uh, dang near say 300 Savage velocity, not Ooh. quite 300 Savage mm. velocity, but getting in the ballpark, right? With 125 or 130 or 110 grade mono bullet, right? Um, but they wanted a little bit more and entered the the 300 hammer. And then this or this cartridge is optimized for hunting weight projectiles in the AR platform in 30 caliber. Okay. So I think it does, and it does things a little bit different than the 7.62 by 40 WT. Um, 
in that that 7.62 by 40 WT was maybe designed for a little bit lighter class of bullet, and the 7.62 or the 300 hammer, excuse me, millimeter longer um, than the 7.62 by 40 WT was designed maybe for a little bit heavier projectile um, in that same platform. That the one I, millimeter, yeah, just made all the difference. I, Subjectively, I know that these numbers don't tell the whole story because there's right. shoulders and there's th- you know thickness. And there's all these little other things you can play around with, but yeah, it's just funny when they just whoop, a little tiny change. I guess when you when you like look at the design intent, it was perhaps to emulate a thirty thirty Winchester in an AR. Yeah, and I guess people will think, well, thirty thirty Winchester. I mean, like, well, big deal. But it's actually a pretty viable cartridge. I mean, one hundred and fifty grain projectile at twenty five or twenty two fifty to twenty three hundred. I mean, that's no joke out of a 16-inch barrel, that's a super viable hunting cartridge. And when mm-hmm. you think about guns like the Winchester 94 or the Marlin 336, um, these super handy, mega-prolific lever-action hunting rifles that had these short, handy barrels and little profiles firing 30-30, which have killed hundreds of thousands of whitetails and probably a lot of other big game around the nation and world probably, um, like this was the viable solution in an AR, like a modern platform, it was a 300 hammer. What I just don't get, so it's it's like, and maybe this is just I'm putting too much into the name, but Wilson Combat, mm-hmm. they kind of a lot of times you saw with the with the pistols they would come out with, you know, it was all about like you know maybe they had a concealed carry model or they got Combat in the name. It seems like you're going to use it for defensive purposes sure. or you know doing something like that, kicking doors, right, Mark? Oh, big time. Uh, and then what you're describing is kind of this almost like uh, like did they design it with the intent to have it be used for hunting out of an AR? Like yeah, were they kind of like hey, our Wilson Combat ARs go hunting with them. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was an awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it just it's it's coming from that company. It seems kind of like a head scratcher in some regards. Yeah, I think again the intent was capitalizing on every square inch that the standard frame AR had to offer mm-hmm. without getting goofy, and by that I mean like very odd bolt faces, modified magazines. Like the only provision you'd really need to make aside from the barrel and the gas system, which goes without saying, right? Is you should use 300 AAC magazines, right? In there, oh yeah, yeah. to I, allow feeding of the, the case because it's going to have a different, you know. I found with my 300 blackout metal mags work really well. Sure, a little yeah. bit better than like Magpul regular 5.56 P mags. Bingo! Now you can get a 300 AAC P mag, yeah, which has the correct geometry to the feed lips that's going to allow that to work much better. So everything about the, the like case head though, I mean everything, same. it's all the same. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, you're still using your standard AR bolt, yep. and you're still using pretty much all the other same stuff, just a barrel yep. change. What, do you know what the what's, like, the twist rate and the gas system on this? Like, are, is it still kind of nifty where, oh, yeah, the powder's all burnt by eight inches down the barrel, so it works really well out of a short rifle? Is there anything like that going on with this? Or? It's nifty in the sense of I couldn't tell you if it's, like, a, a mid-length, intermediate length, or rifle length gas system, because um, I've never played with one. Uh, but looking at twist rates, slower than you would expect. Like a lot of times on a 300 AAC, you're seeing a 1 and 7 or a 1 and 8 twist. Mm-hmm. And again, the idea behind that cartridge is spin stabilizing a very long, heavy projectile. Yeah. Not the case with the 300 hammer or the 762 by 40 WT for that matter. Um, the idea here is velocity out of this system. And so if you slow the twist rate down, you have less friction and thusly more velocity. So it's like a 1 in 13 or 1 in 15 Oh yeah, yeah. I was I, getting ready to hear maybe like one in nine, one in ten, but wow. Yeah, no, it's just it's slower. That's one thing I was trying to find it in my notes here, but yeah, I mean you're right on track with that. I think I saw. Oh, here we go. Yeah, one in one in thirteen. I feel like I even saw. Yeah, one in thirteen, one in fifteen. I feel like I saw even like one in sixteen somewhere. One in eighteen. Don't quote me on that, but I remember being like startled when I saw that. But definitely, you know, it's showing one in thirteen and fifteen here for sure. In fact, yeah. So again, they're, the idea is optimizing a heavier weight bullet, yeah, right, for hunting without going to the super massive heavy 208 to 230, 240 grain, 30 caliber projectile. Because again, the precedence isn't put on suppressed subsonic performance. Are these bullets that shooting out? Are they like cup and core style bullets, or are they mono? You could both. Oh, okay. Yep. Because I know you said that that 762 by 40 WT was more almost designed around like a mono style. It could be. You could using projectiles like a 110. Barnes, which is a yeah. mono, okay. um, which is going to have a, a similar length profile to maybe like a 130 
five grain or 130 grain or 125 grain lead bullet. Okay. Right. Despite being lighter, it's just going to be a little bit longer. Whereas this again, emulation of 30, 30 ballistics, 150 grain, yeah. semi-conventional 30 caliber hunting projectile. So really, really squeezing the most out of the standard frame AR without getting wild, wonky or goofy mm-hmm. um, with strange cartridges. Does this does this cartridge need more love? Um, does it? I think it's Gene might be listening. I think it depends on how you look at it, right? So, if if you want the easy button, I still think the answer is three hundred AC, right? Because brass is plentiful, loaded ammunition is plentiful. It has more infrastructure. Yeah, and it's not really deemed proprietary anymore because it's so prolific, right? Understand, though, that it's not the same thing. Like the 200 to 250 foot per second advantage that the 300 hammer would carry over 300 AC or even more, depending on how you load or what your barrel length and configuration is, I think it deserves a little bit more credit as a viable big game round. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the 300 AC, you could look at as probably marginal. Um, again, big asterisk and caveat behind that depending on how you load it and depending on what you're doing with it. Right, yeah. depending on how you want to use it exactly. Yeah, because like a 110 grain Barnes in a 300 blackout is a hellacious deer hunting round with yeah. with respective ranges. Yeah, right? you got to have it set up right because there's some people in certain in certain tenses or loadings and stuff that are like, well, the 300 blackout just becomes almost a novelty. Sure. You know, where it's like, oh yeah, look how quiet I can shoot. C- correct. But, well, it's but the classic can. cartridge I mean, thing, too. Like, it's like, oh, you know, step it up, step it up, step it up, step it up. Well, you, you can keep stepping it up. You yeah. know, all of a sudden you're like, well, no, that's not, you know, we need a 450 Nitro Express. It's like, well, that's not what this was for. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, I think if, if you wanted the same big game performance that you would expect out of a 30-30 Winchester. Mm-hmm. Out of an AR platform. Out of an AR, yeah. That's what you get. Now. I can, I dig it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it does seem like they've, like, maxed the performance of that 30 cal bullet in like you said a standard AR. Yeah. Now you could also argue just get like an AR10 and 308. That's what would bigger. you it's bigger, it's heavier, but by how much? A lot. A lot. AR10s like, also seem to be like they tend to be a bit more finicky than AR15s. Yeah, because there's no standard. Yeah. Right? Well, the I shouldn't say that either. There is, right? M110 SR25, like all that being said, they're they're not they're not like an AR. Yeah. Like when I was doing ARs for a living, they are very different animals. There's there's a little bit more that goes into them, and they become very large. Mm-hmm. The receivers are very long, except for like a, a DPMS G2 receiver, which is pretty compact. But like a standard AR10 receiver, it's a it's a large creature, um, and then weight, bulk, recoil, the whole nine yards. Um, whereas a you know, 300 hammers, probably a pretty manageable system. Mm-hmm. Think about a 30-30, how oh, nice yeah. that is to shoot. I was watching guys shoot it online, and yeah. it was just yep. easy, yep. easy, easy, yeah. easy all day. Let me ask you this, Ryan. I know we're over time here, but, like, okay, let's well, say a person goes. What's new? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I pointed it out. <laughs> uh, a person, they've got an AR. They're yeah. like, yeah, but, you know, but I want to I hunt with my AR. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's five, five, six, whatever. And they're like, I'm interested in this 300 hammer. Mm-hmm. What would they have to do to convert that? What would be what like what would be the most logical steps? Just like a barrel and magazine. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yep. Presumably too, a three hundred hammer. I mean, if it's if it's doing what it says it it can do, I mean, I don't see why you couldn't use it for defensive purposes as well. Oh, n- right. I, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, some people have have some people. <laughs> think that maybe we we always tend to relate things back to hunting. So I'm gonna that's, I'm gonna uh, unrelate it. To, I'm gonna pull us out of the, the hunting realm. But, but but presumably, I mean, hey, a thirty thirty against a bad guy in your house that's gonna you know it's coming for you or whatever versus a, a two twenty three. Yep. Uh, I don't see why not. I mean, to load it with one hundred and fifty grain full metal jacket, it takes on the form of what we would expect out of like a military ball round, right? It's got this right. FMJ thirty caliber projectile in it, and it's. That's a lot of cartridge. It is. Yeah. 
But I suppose then, you know, the thing is, when you want to get ammo for this thing, you pretty much have to go to Wilson Combat at this or point. Or load. Yeah. Or load. Yep. Okay. So that's kind of the thing. Like, mm-hmm. if you're into plug and play solutions that yeah. are, you know, already exist, there's already a million and one uh, uh, things out there for it, the infrastructure, like I said before, then it may not be the one for you. Yeah. Uh, you know what I was thinking too, as we were talking about this a little bit, you know, well, no, I can't, I can't directly correlate this, but I'm like, hey, here we are. Mm-hmm. We're coming up with a caliber, or a, I mean, not a caliber, a cartridge mm-hmm. for fun. The old 6.5 BC, you know, we're experimenting around. Maybe that's what the guys at Wilson Combat were up to. Yeah. You know, some people are like, oh, yeah, but your 6.5 BC is kind of like this, and it's kind of like that. It's like, well, yeah, but it's new. Yep. We did it. It's cool. It's new. It's different. And they, yeah. uh, the Wilson Combat guys just kind of took it a step further, and they got it, you know, kind of like commercialized. Yeah. And Sammy Speck now. Yeah. Commercialized Sammy Speck. Sammy Speck yeah. Good on them. Yep. Like I said, I don't want to make a direct correlation because then they'll be like, "Yeah, we're not a, we're not three dudes farting around in a podcast studio." <laughs> you know, they, there was probably a very very uh, legitimate what? product development process well, to think, that. I but mean, hey, I mean, they made something new. What it's if awesome. there is three dudes down there farting around a podcast studio? Then they, I mean, get better on it, and honestly, then we should pick up our game. What are we doing? We're not commercialized yet. <laughs> same spec, and their names are like Tim, Brian, and Ark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That would be it's a bizarre inception. world. But yeah, not, yeah, but I, yeah. I don't think, I mean, like, they obviously had a pro, like a problem or something that they're trying to, and not I necessarily think it, a problem, but they're like, okay, yeah, the 300 blackout is this, but yep. here's, like like you said, Ryan, here are the detractors. Yep. How do we maximize the AR platform yep. pushing a 30 cal bullet yep. at a good velocity? That's without gonna getting be, goofy. Without getting goofy, yep. where it's going to be super lethal and, and really make it a viable, very practical, low recoiling, Mm-hmm. Hunter, I'm talking myself into this damn thing. It's not hard to do, Mark, on no. the show. We no. do that a lot. Um, I'm curious, though, like, you know, for Gene, who has requested this many times, yes. if he has one, maybe he can tell us more. People who actually have this thing, please uh, please hit us up, like, you know, raid that comment section, tell us tell us what you think about it, because I, I don't have any experience behind one. Like, we have Muckypedia over here who mm-hmm. can kind of assess the cartridge. I've never fired it. However, hasn't uh, you know, he hasn't fired it. So, this is purely informational and uh, and also a bit, uh, oh, I don't know, just coming from our own opinions based on No, that. I watched a couple uh, YouTube videos, so that's... Oh, what, okay, got it. So, actually, as, no, this is, this, is professional, yep. this is professional, yep. uh, very experienced advice. Um, but anyway, if you've got one... We'd love to hear about it, what you think about it, and um, yeah, all that good stuff. Of yeah. course, if you don't want to talk about it, you just want to say it, you know, maybe maybe how you enjoyed it before you got in that boating accident. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Tragic loss. Tragic loss. I know mean, it's at the bottom of the lake. Luckily, luckily, you know, you're fine, but. Davy Jones's locker. We'll all get through this together. Yes. <laughs> let us know about your now far gone 300 hammer <laughs> and what you loved about it. <laughs> Ryan, thank you. Jim, thank you. Gene, thank you for writing in and commenting and commenting and hammering and hammering on the 300 Mm -hmm. Hammer. We sincerely appreciate it. If you've got another cartridge that you want to hear about, anybody out there, let us know. We've had a few people really, like, you know, harass us into doing an episode. So if you really want to hear something, (laughs) that's how you you do it. Um, Yeah, use them as an example. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye. Bye.